take it a step further. When we are dealing with either the cost module or the revaluation module, there is a word there and that is called depreciation. What is depreciation? What is depreciation? What's the difference between depreciation and impairment? Yes. A liar has a tail. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Depreciation is different from impairment. Okay, so give me depreciation. What's the when we say an asset we are depreciating an asset? What does it mean? Uh, it's lost the value. Okay. Yeah, yeah it has value. that connotation though, but it doesn't mean that it's losing its value. Usually the depreciation has to do with the cost of the assets that we allocate for the period of the usage of the asset. So for instance, if we buy the laptop for $850 and we say that we use the laptop for 10 years, then every year we will allocate 800 over 10, which is uh, $80, to the financial statement as part of the rating of cost because expenses must be matched against revenue, the matching concept. How we get it? So depreciation is that charge, the annual charge or allocation of cost of what? Plants and equipment. But impairment, on the other hand, is the loss in value of an asset. So with your example you gave earlier, that the cost of the laptop is 600 Ghana, and you sold it for 500 Ghana. In that case, the asset has lost value. So that extra 100 loss in value is referred to as impairment. I hope you get the difference. Right. So we're going to be depreciating the assets. And so there are usually a lot of methods. I think in F3 you look at a couple of methods of depreciation. But here we are going to be focusing on only two, the straight line method and then the reducing balance method. Tell me the difference between the two. So depreciation will be cost minus residual value. Divided by the estimated useful life, life of the asset. Yes. Okay. What about the revaluation, uh, reducing balance? But straight line to you can do percentage. I hope you know that one. Also. So what is the core distinction between straight line and reducing balance? The core distinction is that with a straight line method, the same amount of depreciation is charged over the estimated useful life of the asset. But with reducing balance method, the depreciation value reduces as the asset ages. So that's the core distinction. So yes, we can know this formula, but percentages can be given for straight line and reducing balance. And also, with reducing balance, the depreciation of the asset is calculated on the carrying value of the asset. That's a very uh, important thing you need to understand. So the percentage which is given to you is 25%, and you are using reducing balance, you will do the 25% on the carrying value of the asset, which is the cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation. But if he says, 25% straight line, straight line, you just do it on the cost of the asset. That is why the same amount will be charged over the estimated useful life of the asset. Are you getting that distinction? Right. So, reducing balance, we charge it on the carry value. Straight line method, we charge it on the cost of the asset. Reducing balance, the depreciation figure reduces as the asset ages. But straight line method, the depreciation figure remains the same over the estimated useful life of the asset. Now, with a cost module, it's not a rocket science because it's simple. And you can do it, everybody can do it and you go away. You don't need any uh, um, magic to do that one. Basically, what happens is that once we calculate our depreciation, what will be the double entry? For calculating depreciation. 
we we have it. Income statement. So income statement. Okay, and then we credit what? Property, plant, and equipment, or someone who say accumulated depreciation. Are you getting it? Right. So that's the double entry. So the cost module is not a rocket science. But it, it becomes an issue when the business uses the revaluation module. And the standard also says that companies must carry, or yes, entities must carry their assets not more than the fair value of the asset or below the fair value of the asset. For that reason, at least once every year, the company must what? Revalue an asset. So it is going to be the norm that many of our assets, we're going to be using what? The revaluation module. But when the asset is revalued, two things can happen. Number one, an asset can be revalued upward or downward. Let's look at the upward revaluation first. When an asset is valued upward, what it simply means is that the current value of the asset, let's go this way, the fair value of the asset is greater than the current value of the asset. Does it make sense? So you are carrying the asset as 500, but now when you are selling it, you will sell it as 600. So the value is now 600. So that is upward revaluation. Anytime there is upward revaluation like that, what is the double entry? What's the double entry? You debit property, plant, and equipment, then you credit revaluation reserves. Okay? So that's the double entry. You debit property because why are you debiting the property, plant, and equipment? Because the amount should go up. It is less than the fair value. So the excess is what you will debit with the property, plants, and equipment, and then you credit revaluation reserves. Now, immediately you do revaluation, it means that depreciation should be or must be calculated on the revalued amount of the assets. Depreciation must be calculated on the revalued amount of the assets. So, if the current value of the asset is $500, and we revalue it as the fair value to become, say, $600, what is the excess? $100. It is this $100 that we are saying that you should debit property, plants, and equipment with the $100 and then credit the revaluation reserves also with $100. But this is a key statement. Depreciation must be calculated on the revalued amount of the assets. What it means is that if the estimated useful life of the asset is say, ten, uh, is say five years, what is left now, remaining useful life of the asset is five years. What it means is that instead of having a depreciation under the historical cost, the depreciation under historical cost will be 500 divided by five, and that gives us 500 divided by 5? 100. 100. But then, we won't charge 100 to the income statement, as we saw earlier. We will going to be using the revaluation module. So with the revaluation module, the depreciation will not be on the 500, but rather 600 over what? 5. 5. What do I have? 120. If you check, there is an extra Depreciation of how much? $20. The question is, what happens to our profits? Profit will reduce because cost has increased. There are times when, when this thing happens, the company has to uh, compensate shareholders for the increase in their uh, uh, expenses and the reduction in their profits. To compensate them, 
Companies would undertake what we call annual transfer. The annual transfer will be done from the revaluation reserve account to the retained earnings using the remaining useful life of the assets. So if you check, how much do we put there? 100. So the transfer is going to be 100 divided by the useful life of the assets, 5, which is going to be $20, just the same as this amount. So that the double entry for this now becomes you debiting the revaluation reason to reduce this amount by 20 then now you credit your retained earnings with the 20 so that your retained earnings will not increase because dividends are paid out of retained earnings. This is what we do when there is upward revaluation. Does it make sense? But this is not always done. It depends on the question. It depends on the question. There is an aspect of revaluation also that we will be doing under IAS 12, income tax. So put this concept at the back of your mind because when we get there, there will be deferred tax issue that we have to talk about when there is upward revaluation of an asset. Second, can I go? Right. Second, downward revaluation. So when there is upward revaluation, it means the fair value of the asset is greater than the current value of the asset. It's a good news for the company. But this one, it's a bad news. Because here, it means the current value of the asset is greater than the fair value of the asset. In such circumstances, downward revaluation can occur in two ways. Number one, downward revaluation can occur as a first time the first time, or downward revaluation can occur in a subsequent year after upward revaluation, and the treatments are different. So if it is the first time, like this illustration we did, where the asset was revalued upward, the treatment is going to be different from if it is what? A subsequent year's downward revaluation. So let's look at how that works. First time, downward revaluation. So if it is first time, current value of the asset, $600. Fair value of the asset, $500. So this is a downward revaluation. Now, in actual sense, this is more or less like impairment loss. It means the asset has suffered what? An impairment. For that reason, this is an expenses. So what we do is that we will just debit the income statement with that impairment loss, and then credit the property, plant, and what equipment, and that is hundred dollars. 